the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 302, Luke 14 to 16. Pharisees and their love of money. The heart of Jesus, who came to find the sinners, was like the mind of a shepherd who wandered looking for a lost sheep. First point. During Jesus' time, the Pharisees opened up their house for parties as a show of self-righteousness. During Jesus' time, Judea was governed by the Roman Empire. Thus, many Jews suffered from heavy tax. Although the majority of Jews suffered financially during this time, there was a group of people who thrived financially despite all this, and they were the Sadducees who controlled the finances of the Jerusalem Temple. The Sadducees lived financially prestigious lives, living off the income from the Jerusalem Temple, and the Pharisees, although not as prestigious, still lived comfortably. They had no guilt that they lived well whilst the Jews lived poor, and they believed that their financial prestige was given to them by God. During this time, the Pharisees held many parties and feasts in their houses. Since superficially, it appeared that they were generous, but deep down, they only invited those who had the ability to pay them or invite them back. However, they used this to proclaim themselves as self-righteous. Here, the sad debate about the Sabbath occurred. Jesus first asked the teachers of the law and the Pharisees about the healing the sick during Sabbath. When they could not answer, Jesus healed the sick and said the following, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? During this party, Jesus gave two teachings. The first was to sit in the lowest seat. The second was to provide feasts for those who were not able to repay. Therefore, Jesus taught that in order to be blessed by God, they were not to follow in the ways of the Pharisees, but rather provide aid to those who truly need it. Jesus then followed up with the parables of the feast to explain the kingdom of God. Jesus tried to correct their way of thinking that the Jews were not selected by God for prestige but for mission. Second point, Jesus used a parable to explain the preparations needed to become his disciple. Jesus taught what it took to become his disciple. This was none other than to take their cross. Jesus, who taught all things through parables, used another parable to explain the cost of being a disciple. The first was the parable of the one who built a tower. In other words, a disciple was to not give up and keep going with his role. The second was the parable of the king about to go to war. As a king who was preparing for war, would only go with confidence to win. A disciple also had to prepare with the confidence to win. The third was the parable of the salt that has lost its saltiness. A disciple was like salt. If he lost his discipleship, he would not be able to carry out his task. Third point, Jesus explained the heart of God in wanting to find his lost sheep through three parables. All the details of Jesus' healing ministry spread around the whole of Judea, and this led the religious leaders to spy on Jesus. The Sanhedrin assembly tried hard to test Jesus and to trap him by sending their best debaters. One day, some tax collectors and sinners who were excluded from the Jewish community came to Jesus and seeing this, the Pharisees and teachers of the law rebuked Jesus. 
Jesus then used the parables to explain God's heart in wanting to find his lost sheep. The first was the parable of the shepherd who had lost his sheep. Jesus explained that one sinner's repentance was the joy in all of the kingdom of God. The second was the parable of a woman who found her lost drachma. The third was the parable of the father who found his lost son. First point, Jesus taught that a person could not serve both God and money. Jesus pitied those who lived in financial hardship and lived under the Sanhedrin assembly's hypocrisy. Jesus taught using the parable of the shrewd manager, a manager of a wealthy man was fired. In order to save himself, the manager called in each one of his master's debtors and then asked each of them how much they owed his master. When the master saw that his manager took such measures, he praised him. As such, even a manager that was not acknowledged by his master did his best to prepare for his future. What Jesus tried to teach through this parable was that just as this manager used his master's position to prepare for his own future, the disciples were also to wisely use the possessions of this world for the kingdom of God. The conclusion to Jesus' parable was that one was unable to wholeheartedly serve both God and money. Fifth point, Pharisees were those who served both God and money. When the Pharisees heard Jesus' teaching that one could not serve both God and money, they laughed. This was because they believed that their wealth had been given to them by God as their blessing. Although Jesus tried to correct their way of thinking through the parable of the shrewd manager, it was simply inevitable that they loved the money more than the kingdom of God. Jesus then rebuked the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, that they were only fixed on the words of the laws rather than their meanings. Jesus furthermore told them to accept that Jesus was sent to fulfill the laws and the prophets. Jesus then spoke about the issue of divorce to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. The Pharisees reported to the words in Deuteronomy chapter 24 to ask Jesus a trick question about divorce. Therefore, Jesus gave them an answer. Jesus then used the parable of the rich man and Lazarus to teach them about the kingdom of God. When the rich man went to hell and was suffering, he asked for his family to not be brought there. To this, Abraham answered, Those who belonged in heaven were those who believed in Jesus Christ, the Pharisees who did not repent even after listening to Jesus, would soon lament and suffer. We must look to Jesus and hope to be invited to the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. This Tong Doc app is amazing. When I first met Dr. Zhou, we were speaking together at a conference, and when I saw the Tong Bible and the way he had placed this one story together, the Bible, one story, I ordered cases of this Bible. Now to see this app, the Tong Doc app, ready for you to use in your daily Bibles reading. This is amazing because so many people tell me I don't understand the Bible. And he has placed it in an order as so that it is one story. And then day after day takes you through the Bible in a way that God's Word will touch your heart so deeply that it changes your beliefs. It helps you to rise up and be the amazing person He created you to be. Welcome to the Tong Dog app.